Well, by popular request, I'm gonna do it. Shop Tour 2017 starts now. Boom! Now, the first thing you're going to walk into is the moment you pass through my garage door is this table saw cabinet. Now, you guys have seen this thing used many times on end throughout all of the videos since I made this sucker. Now, granted, it is a big cabinet. It's about the size of a sheet of plywood and about 37 inches tall. However, if all you're going to use is a table saw, router, and all your handheld tools, this thing will fit the bill because it has 17 drawers, like I said, holds the router and holds a table saw and not only turns a normal contractor saw into a table saw cabinet, but basically is the hub of your shop. Now, some frequently asked questions that I get about this cabinet, why did I just spend all the money on a contractor saw instead of buying a cabinet saw? Well, this particular contractor saw came from my wife's grandfather who passed away, but before so, he had me come up to pick this saw up. He just basically gave it to me and said, I can't use it anymore and I know that you could. And that is basically where the Rockin' H name came from. It was basically his legacy because it was a Rockin' H ranch or farm that he actually had for many, many years. And the fact that he gave me that saw, there's no way I couldn't name the show and name the business after him. So that's why I kept this saw that's why I spent all the money I did on this cabinet. Well, since I mentioned the router table, that's where I'm going to take you next. This is an extension wing of my table saw cabinet. Since I have all the surface area, I wanted to try and save as much real estate in the floor and off to the side as I possibly could, so incorporating the router just seemed like a good idea. I've got uh, a storage drawer down below that's about 12 and a half inches deep for all of my spare routers and their accessories. And then storage drawers over here for the half and quarter inch router bits as well as any uh, throat plates and uh, jigs to help set up my bits. Uh, it does utilize my T-Glide Wiesmeyer 52 inch fence that I have here, but I don't have a dedicated fence for the router. I plan on making something that will attach to that fence uh, and, and help take care of the unorthodox style of use that I've had to do in the past. So um, that's pretty much it for the router. Now immediately behind the router table, you're gonna notice my lumber cart. This thing is packed plum full, as far as you can tell right now. It's a little unorganized right now, but what lumber cart is organized? Not mine, at least. I plan on organizing it later, but uh, it's serving its purpose quite well right now. Um, but yeah, let me tell you, trying to build something this big on a tabletop was a chore to get off of the tabletop. Uh, especially because I had all those pallets blocking my way, if you saw the video. I had to raise the garage door about halfway. I mean, it was a chore to, to walk it down off those tables. Um, but this thing holds, I, I can't remember the exact capacity of how many sheets of plywood it'll hold in the back. Um, it's a great little unit to have, so you ought to think about building this. Now, just moving up the wall a little bit, you'll notice behind me some little storage drawer cabinets. Now, I picked these up salvaged from a garage sale, uh, or hospital garage sale, excuse me, and uh, these are Pixis cabinets used to store drugs in. Now it had a computer that was attached to the sides of each one of these and you would just type in some things or scan some barcodes and the appropriate drawer would pop out with the drug inside that you needed and it would log in the computer that you took one out and you shut it back and it would lock. Now it had a whole bunch of uh, little actuators in the back that I had to pop out and uh, that's what kept these drawers locked. So. Uh, once I got them all popped out, then I could move them freely and put whatever I wanted. Now the downside to all these drawers is I haven't labeled them yet. So every time I come up here trying to find something, I'm just like, you know, just pulling them all out. Like, no, no, no. And until I find the one that I want. The cool thing is, is that I can take the drawer completely out and over to where I'm going. Now, I like these, but they're not heavy duty. They're not meant to hold a bunch of tools. I've got... Uh, some you know really heavy wrenches and some of these down here, but it's still not it's still not heavy duty enough to do what I want it to do. So eventually, I do plan on getting rid of these and replacing it with a uh, really nice uh, roll around toolbox uh, that I plan on making. I, I want to make it you know with dovetail joinery and and stuff like that. I really really want it to last because it, it'll be like an heirloom that I'll pass down. I don't know when that'll be. That might be way down the line. 
I really can't say. I've got so much to do in this shop, as you'll, as you'll soon see. But uh, these are really good for smaller items. Uh, screws, nuts, bolts, um, cutoffs that you need for uh, certain jigs. I mean, it's, I don't know, it, it's really a good thing to have. So if you come across something like this, um, keep an open mind. It might just work really, really well in your shop. Now, just up the wall from the drawers, I have my two-stage Harbor Freight dust collector. Now, I acquired this again from Lance Robleski, uh, before he moved to Texas, that is, uh, quite a while back, and it has served its purpose a lot in this shop. It is my dedicated table saw dust collector, and I have filled this thing up uh, on more than one occasion, so it does a great, great job. Uh, Lance actually made the fine baffle uh, two-stage collector here, uh, he built this whole rig up, and I just kind of took it as is. Um, it does take up a significant footprint in the shop, uh, so eventually I would like to upgrade this to a Cyclone, which is a lot you know, less uh, wide, <laughs> maybe a little taller, uh, but it's a lot less wide, and uh, that'll help save some, some, uh, some space. Okay, I know, I know. This looks like a junk pile. Well, it is. <laughs> These are the benchtop tools that I really don't have a storage space for at the present moment. So right now they are taking up some valuable real estate here on this countertop. Now the lathe will stay. When I get it organized over here, this is going to be great. You guys saw me build this cabinetry um, last year and uh, it has really, really come in handy to store some of the things that uh, are difficult to store anywhere else. A lot of this stuff was in some metal cabinets that I had here and it was just open shelving and I hated it. Dust would gather all over it, it was nuts. But the drawers, um, if you guys are familiar with me at all, I'm a big proponent of drawers. I don't like getting down on my knees, searching for stuff in a deep old cabinet down below. All of my drawers are on full extension drawer glides and that includes the table saw, my assembly table, anything that I put drawers in, I want full extension. I even put uh, toe kick drawers down on the bottom, so I utilize as much storage as I possibly can. Um, but these cabinets, uh, they're going to stay with the property, so that's why I made them as uh, over-engineered as I did. I wanted them to last. So whenever the new person, whoever buys this house in the future, very distant future, um, comes into this garage and they see you know, these cabinets, they're just gonna be like, oh, man cave, you know, I, I want that to, to be a big selling point. So, now, off the cabinetry on the back wall is my assembly table that sits in front of it. This thing is great. Not only is it an outfeed table from my table saw, but it serves a purpose of T-tracks for clamping, uh, assembling large projects, even larger if I wanted to use the table saw, and it has storage drawers down below for a lot of my bigger items and some things that I really need for assembling projects. Uh, it also incorporates my air compressor and a dust collector port that comes out of the tool tray right over here. The air compressor nozzles are right here. Uh, so this thing is a, is a very all-around table. Now, a lot of the frequently asked questions that I get about this tabletop as well as my table saw top is what is this white top that I have on it? Um, it's called whiteboard. You can pick it up at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's a four by eight sheet. Sometimes you can get them four by four sheets, I think. And it's basically just a fiberboard substrate with some kind of a white slick, um, I wouldn't say paper, but I wouldn't call it plastic either. Uh, it's not very, it's not a very sturdy material but because it's easily removed and replaced, that's why I chose it. I didn't want to use Formica, didn't want to use paint, uh, because if it gets chipped, damaged, I would have to make a whole brand new top. This way I can just peel up this fiberboard, cut a new piece to match, and stick it right back down in place with some glue. So you might want to just take a little time and check out the whiteboard at Home Depot and Lowe's and see if you think that you can utilize it on your tabletops, because like I said, it's the uh, it's very easy to replace. One other thing that I forgot to mention about this assembly table is that it stores on the side my Craig Jig cabinet, Craig Jig accessories, as well as my dovetail jig, which is a big Porter Cable 24 inch Omni jig up underneath. Uh, so this is a, a 
massive, massive cabinet that holds quite a bit of, of uh, stuff. Now just off the metal cabinet right here is the mud locker system that I put in uh, to take the place of some open shelving here that I had some shoes and stuff on. And then over here is the door into my house as well as the door outside. Mud locker systems are great. Uh, I wanted to put this in the house, but the wife said no. So it came out here. If you want to build a mud locker system, I do have plans on my website for this one too. Now sitting just in front of the cabinet is my 17 inch Grizzly bandsaw. Now just off the mud locker system is probably one of my crown jewels of my shop. And that is my clamp cabinet. Uh, I love this cabinet. It holds approximately in these two areas here alone. 54 clamps, if not more, depending on how you organize them. The two doors can only hold seven of the 40 or 50 inch uh, clamps. Uh, I do have some 50s over here. I've got approximately six. I've got one 40 taking up the last space. And then there's seven 40s over here. And they're a combination of Bessie and Jet. But I love, love, love this cabinet. So you guys need to uh, check out the plans for it. It is on my website and uh, it is a great great cabinet to have plus a place to store all your stickers Now just off the clamp cabinet is my lumber rack So I've already come full circle around because the garage door is right there now the last part of the shop is Probably my most embarrassing aside from the back wall cabinet uh, countertop and this area I have really big plans for the plans for this is a radial alarm compound saw station uh, that will have a total of 42 drawers, if you can believe it. Uh, and that will include toe kick drawers that will go the entire length. It's going to be about 15 and a half feet long. And then the table saw, or excuse me, the uh, band saw will sit at the very end. The radial alarm saw that I have is a 10 inch laser track craftsman professional. Uh, it was given to me by my father and uh, uh, the compound saw that I have is the Ryobi 10 inch sliding compound with laser guided track system as well. Um, it is a very nice saw especially for the money that you would spend on it. Uh, it beats spending you know $900 on that Bosch saw that Home Depot recently put on sale for like 300 bucks but still um, it, what you get for the money on that is uh, a very a very good saw. Now for the big question that you're probably wondering is why did I show you a shop tour in the condition that it's in? Well, if you saw the preview for the season, there is going to be a lot of changes in this shop. So you can kind of see what I'm actually working in, how I'm working in it. It's a oversized two car garage. So it's about, you know, 250 square feet. Um, I know that some people work in a lot smaller areas and you guys deal with the same kind of organizational problems that I do as well as the real estate problems that I do. So it will give you a good indication of how you can make a small area like a two car garage and turn it into a professional shop. So guys, thank you very much for coming with me on this tour of my shop. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I know I did. It, it gives me great pleasure to talk about anything that's in my shop. And if you have any questions, be sure and drop them down below. Uh, I'll leave links down in the descriptions below for all of this stuff that you've seen today. And I guess I will talk to you on next week's build. So one, two, three, boom! Bang, bang, won't stop till we're legend. Boom.